Yeah, hello and welcome to another video about Ripple XRP. So yeah, Ripple or the XRP chart remains to be difficult. Um, we are remaining below these two very important resistance levels. And I told you that unless we are above them, we can't really talk about a breakout. So you can see the two lines here. One is the 91 cent level that we touched various times here. Resistance, resistance resistance yeah um here it was support yeah so it's a it's an important level um the other one is the one dollar and two level and this is this significant high swing high swing high support 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 and resistance here so that is also a very very important level that we haven't even reached yet or have come close to it because we have bounced off the 91 cent level so until we get at least above 91 cents better one dollar and two i don't think we are in an uptrend so as i said in previous videos the structure i don't really like you can you can still count it in a bullish way as per the elite wave method yeah so assuming that the wave c low here would be complete and what we need to acknowledge is that um compared to many other cryptos after the wave c low here that happened end of january mm, XRP has consequently made higher lows. So that is, first of all, not bad. And other cryptos like, let's say, Harmony One, for example, they have come back into the target range. Yeah, this is the target range that we defined already back in November or early December, where we said that XRP with a high likelihood is going to get in there and turn around. What happened? It touched the 78.6% FIP level at 56 cents and in fact has turned around and so far has not come back into the target area. So many other cryptos have come back into the target area. So whenever a crypto, generally this works for stocks and shares, of course, as well. Um, whenever a crypto reaches the target area, from my point of view, the minimum requirements for a correction are complete and it has the potential to turn around. It has the potential to get back into an uptrend and it has the potential to go to new all time highs. So far, at least, um, yeah, it's making higher lows, not making higher highs necessarily, but the way up here looked quite decent. Yeah, the move up from around 55, 56 cents all the way up to 91 cents was quite decent. It then came down, found support though at 62 cents and has continued to move up since then and made higher lows. So we've had on this chart this ascending trend line. Now that was broken to the downside. We are now below the 50 day moving average again. Now you can redraw this and we have a less steep ascending trend line. I think we have enough touch points to make that a valid trend line. So as long as we stay above that, I think we can be more confident that obviously we remain in an uptrend, but it's also not looking great. You know, it's taking very slow. It's, it's still looking fairly corrective. It's not the rocket star that we would want to see. Um, however, we can count this in a bullish way. Um, but to really be more confident that this is actually a bullish move and that we get out of this correction, it needs to move above one dollar and two, as I said. Yeah, ninety-one cent would be the first level, but one dollar and two. So what would it need to do in order to remain bullish? So in terms of the Elliott wave count, um, we can count this first move up as an impulse. Yeah, it was very impulsive, so you can count this as a first wave, because. What you need after a correction, and this here was obviously a long correction, again, maybe finished, maybe not. The downside potential is still very, very real unless we move above that one dollar and um, two level. Um, so this would have been a wave one, and this here would have been a wave two a corrective wave in which we actually got, let's take a look, let's draw the FIPS from the low to the high. And you can see that in this wave two, we actually touched the 78.6% FIP level at 63 cents. So again, an absolutely valid support level for a second wave. And therefore, yeah, not too unlikely that this was actually a wave two. Now, okay, you can count this here potentially, and that's what you would have to do. You would have to count this as another wave one and a wave two. Let's see what the FIPs say. And also here, found support at the 78.6% FIP level again, very valid for a wave two. Why do I say another wave one, two? Well, if we go one, two here, then the next wave would be a wave three, but a wave three, of course, consists of five waves as well. So 
again in this third wave you would probably have already a one two and now we should start bullish in a wave three and we already see here quite a bullish move the question is is this already it it's currently stopping at the 50 day moving average but where would that need where would that wave three need to land to be valid so let's take a look we take the fibonacci extensions for that and we go from the low here from the beginning of that wave one to the wave one and to the wave two low and here you go then you have for this third wave we would at, ne at least need to get to the 120 121 level because the minimum target for a wave three would be the 1.618 fibonacci extension bearing in mind that cryptos normally do more than that um, so the 200% extension, absolutely realistic, 135 or even the 2.618. This is all possible, um, but primarily I would say in this region here, between 121 and 135, yeah, for the wave three, we would then come down once more and ideally, so let's say, let's say we go to just 121, okay? Difficult market environment and so on. So we draw the Fibonacci retracement levels and the ideal level for retracement would be in the region between 98 cents and $1 and eight. So ideally what would need to happen, as I said, I just managed mentioned these two levels here, one 91 cents and $1 and two. Ideally you actually in that way for retracement, you would hold above that support level for and then from here, we could move up in a fifth wave, which would land somewhere up here. Um, it's impossible at the moment to calculate the fifth wave. We need to see where the third wave ends, where the fourth wave ends, but it should be somewhere at least in the region around 150. So this is the bullish count. I'm not saying it's gonna happen. Um, we need to be more, we can be more confident about that First of all, when we break above 191 cents and then also $1 and two. Until then, every the downside potential is still very real. And I think when you break that ascending trend line, then that immediate uptrend is over. Still possible, but at the latest when you drop it below um, here, 90, 62 cents, sorry, 62 cents. Yeah, I think that's it already then. And we have to expect the price to go into the target area once more still think that that potential is still very very real um, and the worst case for this scenario for me for generally what xrp is capable of doing at the moment is that um, 38 cent level here that is the 88.7 percent fib level this is all bullish yeah because even if we come into that target area once more we would reverse in here that is still my view and move to new all-time highs from here only if you drop below 38 cents, I think then we have to expect much, much lower prices for XRP. For now, it's all looking good. Yeah, it's a difficult market environment at the moment. Um, so as you can see, the, the market is capable of moving higher here, but it needs to get at least above 120, uh, no, 91 cents and $1.02. And then 120 is the minimum it needs to do for a wave three. And then we can be more confident that we're actually already in an impulse. And this would only be the first wave up actually anyway. So after that, you get you another ABC that can come down quite a lot and would be another entry point. But really to make that work, to be more confident that this is actually the wave count, first level that we need to break now is 91 cents. That will also be the first resistance. I think we can get there, but only if the price in the next instance breaks above the 50 day moving average, we haven't managed to do so yet. Now this could be or become a bull flag, yeah? This could become a bullish flag. We moved up quite strongly, had a lot of buying volume, yeah? Increased volume, we can see that generally. Um, and yeah, this could be here a bullish flag in some way where we are moving or bullish pennant, right? Where you are now probably already in the next couple of hours expect another breakout because we are moving into the apex here. So it's quite interesting. Um, not saying this has to break up, but if it does, this could be the push that we need to move above the 50 day moving average. And that could then take us maybe to the next FIP level at 87 cents. That would also be the next significant high here where we had resistance before. 
Yeah, that's my view on XRP. Hopefully you liked the update. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. And if you really like the content, then check out the channel membership where you can get access to the Telegram live chat, the Discord server and the weekly live stream. Next live stream is on Sunday. And also make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter and you can find the links for those in the description. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye bye.